Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books <clears throat> right here in the live studios in the Haven, um, Southeast England, otherwise known as Hive. Anglo-Saxon for Hive is the Haven, right next to the English Channel. We're here with SKD, uh, Sham Kishore Das, Brahmachari. <clears throat> um, a little late today, had a busy day today, so let's go right to it. Srimad Bhagavata Mahima Stotram. Five, devote, five verses <clears throat> composed by Srila Sanatana Goswami, the author of Brihad Bhagavatamrita. Goes like this Sarva Sastrabdipi Yusha, Sarva Vedaika Satpala. <clears throat> Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja Sarva Lokaika Drik Prada O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures Singular fruit of all the Vedas Rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths You are the only giver of sight to all the worlds Sarva Bhagavata Prana Srimad Bhagavata Prabho Kalidvang Dutitaditya <clears throat> Sri Krishna Parivartita O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees O Master Srimad Bhagavatam You are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali You are the exact image of Sri Krishna Paramananda Pataya Prema Varshakshadayate Sarvada Sarvasevyaya Sri Krishnaya Namostume I bow down to you who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Madekabando Matsangin Madguro Man Mahadana Manishtadaka Mad Bhagya Mad Anandanamostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadhuta dayin adini chututa kada hanamun chikadachin mam premna rit kanta yospura O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya All right. <clears throat> Gopu Kumar is getting, as usual, uh, an education, spiritual education. And this time it's coming from Narada Muni himself. And it's very deep, um, but it takes depth before we can go to Goloka, Vrindavan. So, um, therefore, I'm going to repeat a couple of verses. I'm going to start with text 197, 198. Um, Narada Muni is explaining to Gopal Kumar uh, about the devotees in Vaikuntha. And he's, he's trying to educate him further, uh, taking him to the, the point of Krishna Prema. Uh, Narada Muni is speaking. So when Narada Muni speaks, we should listen up. These devotees, he's talking about the devotees in Vaikuntha, these devotees are equal to the Lord in being embodiments of eternity knowledge and bliss, just like Him. Yet Sri Krishna has a certain 
inconceivable mystic potency that attracts these devotees to the sweet ecstasy of worshipping Him and, make them, and makes them always think that they are servants at His lotus feet. Commentary Krishna's devotees are helplessly attracted to Him like iron filings naturally drawn to a magnet. The eternal associates of the Lord have never known any other way of life. And the new residents of Vaikuntha, perhaps for several lifetimes, practiced being attracted to Him before they were allowed to enter the spiritual world. <clears throat> the attractive force of devotional service to Krishna is inconceivable. It works its own way. It works in its own way without having to be understood or even noticed. Yet somehow or other, it immerses pure devotees in the boundless ocean of Krishna's sweetness and draws them irresistibly to His service. Only in this way is the distinction of, the, of served and servant maintained forever. Text 199 And so it is with his incarnations. <clears throat> they are also non-different from Sri Krishna Dev, for they are complete embodiments of eternity, knowledge, and bliss. But although Krishna is considered non-different from his plenary expansions, he is also distinct from them, and not only because he is their source, but also because he has his own sweet perfections. Commentary Sri Krishna, the Lord of Goloka, is acclaimed in the Puranas and other Vedic scriptures for being especially sweet. The sweetness found in him is not fully present in Lord Narayana or any of his other expansions. Of course, Krishna is different from his avatars, because he is their source. Yet he is still further different as the supreme, all-attractive object of love. As implied here by the word api, <clears throat> it is only natural that Krishna be the original personality of Godhead and that all other forms of God emanate from him. But Krishna is special not only as avatari, but also as an avatar. He alone is the source of all incarnations of God, and only He displays such wonderful, charming pastimes when He descends to the material world. The Puranas give evidence of those pastimes, recounting many of Sri Krishna's unequaled exploits. The jivas allowed to associate with Lord Krishna in his abode are surely aware that he is, that he, being the supreme controller of all existence, is much greater than they. What most impresses Krishna's devotees, however, is his infinitely variegated sweetness. By seeing his beauty and other glories, they are constantly assured that he is different from everyone else. Only by this deep appreciation of Krishna's supremacy can his most fortunate devotees sustain their exalted love for him and share intimate exchanges with him in the ecstatic tastes of transcendental rasa. Text 200 Some devotees say, that Lord Krishna is the exclusive embodiment of perfect eternity, knowledge, and bliss. He is, after all, the Supreme Brahman. But His associates are all liberated souls who are also embodiments of Brahman. Commentary Some may propose that only Krishna is absolute because he is the Supreme Brahman. Strictly speaking, this is true, 
But the Absolute Person Krishna also includes all his energies. So his pure devotees should certainly be recognized to be on the same absolute platform of spiritual perfection. The Lord's servants, including Anantashesha, Garuda, and others in Vaikuntha, are Brahmamaya, one with him in quality. Jnanis and yogis may become mukta, elevated to impersonal oneness with the Supreme, but the devotees of Narayana are vimukta, super liberated, because they participate in the personal oneness of bhakti. Text 201 This equality is created by a special potency of the Lord, a playful aspect of his pure spiritual self. As Krishna assumes various forms for his pastimes, she creates varieties of ecstasy in devotional service. Commentary How do the Lord's devotees share his supremacy? By the power of bhakti. Bhakti, the worship of the Supreme Lord with love, gives a special ecstatic mellow taste. And by the influence of bhakti, the personality of Godhead displays special forms for particular pastimes. Still, persons who regard Krishna as the Supreme Brahman and yet are unclear about the position of his associates may have a question. Since the devotees who join in, Krishna's past, in the Lord's pastimes have already attained liberation, oneness with Brahman, why should such devotees descend again into duality by assuming different bodies for those pastimes? The answer has already been given. By even asking such a question, one acknowledges the distinction between served and servant. Still, one might counter that since the liberated impersonalists and the devotees of the Personality of Godhead are both in the same liberated condition, that of Satchitananda, nothing less and nothing more, the devotees of the Personality of Godhead must enjoy no more happiness than liberated impersonalists. But this, has, but this has also been previously answered. As the most confidential Vedic scriptures told Gopakumar on Brahmaloka, the happiness that arrives, arises from directly perceiving the true identity of the spirit, the jiva soul, the entity, entity composed of eternity, knowledge and bliss, is actually very meager. Briyad Bhagavatam Tamita 2.2.176 The happiness of mere self-realization is limited, unlike the unimaginable happiness found in true liberation, in which one realizes one's loving relationship with the Supreme. Thus, everything Narada has said stands unrefuted. Text 202 Sri Gopakumar said, I then asked, My Lord, divine deity forms of the Supreme Godhead, like Lord Purushottama, the master of Niladri, are present on earth, and you considered them and you consider them embodiments of eternity, knowledge and bliss. Commentary Gopakumar is very much attracted to Archana, the devotional pro process of deity worship. He has enjoyed the benefits of Archana in Jagannath Puri and on several higher planets in the universe. He has also heard about the glories of this process from various authoritative scriptures. Narada, however, has created a doubt in Gopakumara by telling him that the deities of the Supreme Lord 
are just another kind of incarnation, indistinguishable from other avatars. Either in earlier in this chapter, texts 155 and 157, Narda said, There are those who playfully assume the appearance of deities. Each of these forms of the Lord has its own activities and names, yet all of them are full in eternity, knowledge, and bliss. Though manifesting variety, in substance they are eternally one and the same. Text 203 The one personality of Godhead, whose body is always such Sachidananda, mercifully enacts the pastime of being present in various places, in various forms. Commentary To increase his own pleasure <clears throat> and show kindness to his devotees and to the whole world, Lord Krishna appears in Puri and other places as deities like Lord Jagannath. His deity forms appear not only on earth, but also on other planets of the Bhurloka and in the higher and lower planetary systems. Text 204 What then could be wrong with worshipping those forms disregarding everything else? I would think that no matter how this was done, it would bring great benefit. Commentary Why should the Lord's devotee be criticized for neglecting other spiritual disciplines, dharma, karma, yoga, and so on, to worship the Lord's arch of vigraha? It seems logical that he should gain greatly by such dedication, since all the other devotional practices are included in the worship of the deity. Text 205 But why, therefore, do we hear differing opinions about this from the Puranas? The Puranic statements, coming, coming as they do from the mouths of exalted souls, cannot be less than authoritative. Commentary Śrīmad-Bhāgavatam and other Puranas make comments that apparently deprecate the value of deity worship. For example, a devotee who faithfully engages in worshipping the deity in the temple but does not behave properly toward, each, toward other devotees or people in general is called a prakrita bhakta, a materialistic devotee, and is considered to be in the lowest position. Bhagavatam 11.2.47 One who worships the deity of Godhead in the temples but does not know that the Supreme Lord as Paramatma is situated in every living entity's heart, must be in ignorance and is compared to one who offers oblations unto ashes. Bhagavatam 3.29.22 My dear mother, even if a person worships me with proper rituals and paraphernalia, if he is ignorant of my presence in all living entities, he never pleases me by the worship of my deities in the temple. Oh, that's a big one. Bhagavatam 3.29.24 These and other statements of Shastra, such as Pratima, Manda, Bhurinam, the deity is meant for persons who are less intelligent, come from the mouths of great sages. And the verses cited above are the Supreme Lord's own words, retold from the mouth of Sri Shukadev. As a matter of principle, the words of trustworthy authorities, such as the Lord and His pure devotees, should be accepted as true. Therefore, Gopukumar is puzzled. Any knowledgeable person would surely agree that the deity of forms of the Lord, like Sri Sankarshan and others that appear in the various Varshas of Burloka, including the deities of Sri Ranganath 
and Jagannath in their transcendental cities on earth are directly the personality of Godhead and should be worshipped with faith. <clears throat> but the words Pratima, image, and Archa, worshipped deity, are often used in scripture to criticize the narrow vision of immature devotees. And these special incarnations of the Supreme Lord, Sankrashan, Ranganath, and Jagannath, also present themselves as Pratima and Archa. Does this mean they are inferior forms? Gopakumar hopes that Narada will clear up this doubt. Text 206 Narada Muni is the first spiritual master for the path of worshipping the deity of the Lord. Upon hearing my question, he stood up, embraced me in extreme ecstasy, and answered in this way. Commentary By composing the Narada Pancharatra, Narada long ago became the original teacher of the method of deity worship as pure devotional service. In this verse, the word marga means path, and since it is derived from the verb mrig, to seek, it can also be understood to mean the goal of endeavor. Text 107 to 209. Sri Narada said, The deity forms I have mentioned are all equal to the original personality of Godhead. There is no need to even mention the glories of worshipping them. Persons who worship the Lord's deity, be it ancient, new, or even concocted, provided they worship the deity as being directly the Lord himself, will not fall down from their religious status or be otherwise at fault, even if they neglect their prescribed duties and, uh, and other such principles. Rather, their behavior should be considered exemplary and such deity worship should be regarded as exalted devotional service, yielding the best fruits, best of fruits. Commentary Even irregular worship of the Supreme Lord in His deity form is all auspicious. Because of the strength of bhakti, worshippers who fail to observe all the prescribed varna ashrama duties are not to be considered fallen from the standards of civilized behavior, nor should they be considered unqualified for material reasons, nor faulted for imperfect knowledge of the methods of worship. Ordinarily, offenses committed in ritual de deity worship bring infamy in this life and hellish punishment in the next. But worship of the Lord's deity performed with faith and devotion is transcendental. Persons who practice devotional service are excused for their lack of material qualification. If persons doing devotional service to me happen to fail to execute some of their karmic duties, 30 million exalted sages carry out those obligations on their behalf. That's from the Padma Purana. The general opinion of saintly persons is that devotional worship of the Supreme Lord's deity is always praiseworthy. And exalted Vaishnava Acharyas consider deity worship a principal activity of pure devotional service. The primary meaning of the word bhakti is seva, service, and service to the Lord in the form of deity worship includes elements of all the methods of bhakti yoga. This worship leads to the highest perfection of life, far beyond accomplishments in the four ordinary categories of human endeavor. Text 210 One can reach perfection by honoring even a blade of grass. 
provided one sees it within the presence of the Supreme Lord, or by just once uttering or hearing even a faint semblance of the Lord's name. Commentary One who understands that in a blade of grass, the super soul is present along with the jiva soul, and who therefore honors the grass by watering it and bowing down, is in fact performing devotional service to the Supreme Lord. Such a person easily attains liberation or whatever else he desires. And the same results are obtainable from just once pronouncing or hearing even a dim reflection of the Lord's holy name. Text 211 How then can one find fault in worshipping the deity in whom the Lord personally appears, who evokes remembrance of the Lord, who has been consecrated by mantras, and who is the receiver of all kinds of devotional service? Commentary When the deity of Lord Vishnu has been properly installed with the Avahana invitation mantras and is worshipped by devotees who have put aside all misconceptions that he is a statue of wood or stone, such worship is faultless. Even logicians have to admit the existence of inconceivable potencies in special worldly things, gems, mantras, potent medicines, and so on. If even material objects act in ways undetectable by mundane senses and intelligence, then why can't the Supreme Lord in His own creation appear as He wants? The Lord's deity helps the conditioned souls in their meditation by allowing them to see the Lord's form. Those who visit the deity see the beauty of all his limbs simultaneously and are effortlessly transported to the ocean of, trans of devotional ecstasy. Simply by worshipping the deity, one performs all nine processes of bhakti yoga, hearing, chanting, remembering, serving the lotus feet, the Lord's lotus feet, worshipping, offering prayers, becoming the Lord's servant, becoming His friend, and surrendering everything. Text 212 Persons who properly worship Krishna in His deity form never, respect, never disrespect Krishna's devotees. And if because of being absorbed in worship they accidentally do so, the devotees make light of such offenses and praise the worshippers. Commentary Although worship of the Supreme Lord's deity is a powerful means of devotional service, its good effects can be completely nullified by offenses against Vaishnavas. Narada here assures Gopakumar that serious worshippers of the deity are spiritually mature enough to know that they must carefully avoid displeasing any Vaishnava. Moreover, if a careless neophyte absorbed in deity worship neglects or disrespects Vaishnavas, the Vaishnavas mercifully overlook the trespass and, inste and instead see only the worshippers' sincere attachment to the Lord. Texts 2.13 and 2, to 2.15 to There are others, however, who concoct some new image and call it Lord Hari, but who actually see that form as different from the Lord. They worship with the idea that the deity is no more than stone or some other material substance, and they respect neither the, devo the devotees of Lord Hari, nor living beings in general. Proud of their worship, they transgress the injunctions of the Vedas and the Lord. These foolish worshippers, the lowest of all the Lord's devotees, do not obtain the promised fruits of worship. Commentary When criticizing those attached to deity worship, the scriptures are really speaking about 
offensive worshippers. Let's repeat that again. When criticizing those attached to deity worship, the scriptures are really speaking about offensive worshippers who think the deity only an image of the Supreme Lord, not the Lord in person. Such idolaters consider the deity mere stone, wood, or metal. They concoct their own forms of the Lord, unaware that the authorized deity appears by his own plan, and they are oblivious to the presence of the Lord in his devotees. Because such offensive worshippers lack proper respect for the deity and the Vaishnavas, those worshippers naturally offend all living entities and violate the basic principles of the Vedas. Some Vaishnavas are free from the influence of the modes of nature and others are still conditioned by goodness, passion and ignorance. The offensive worshippers described in this verse are the lowest of the Lord's devotees. In Srimad Bhagavatam 11.247 they are called Prakrita, materialistic. Archayam eva haraye pujam yak shadiya hite natad bhakte shu chanye shu sabhakta prakritak smritaha. A devotee who faithfully engages in the worship of the deity in the temple but does not behave properly toward other devotees or people in general is called a prakrita bhakta, a materialistic devotee, and is considered to be in the lowest position. The scriptural statement, pratima manda man, the deity is meant for the less intelligent, refers to this lowest class of devotees who lack spiritual discrimination. They do not receive the benefits of deity worship described in the Shastras. One who worships the deity of Godhead in the temples but does not know that the Supreme Lord as Paramatma is situated in every living entity's heart must be in ignorance and, in, and is compared to one who offers oblations into ashes. Bhagavatam 3.29.22 In other words, the personality of Godhead does not accept their worship. As stated by Sri Prahlad Maharaj in his prayers to Lord Nishinga, the Supreme Lord, the Personality of Godhead, is always fully satisfied in Himself. Therefore, when something is offered to Him, the offering by the Lord's mercy is for the benefit of the devotee, because the Lord does not need service from anyone. To give an example, if one's face is decorated, the reflection of one's face in a mirror is also seen to be decorated. Bhagavatam 7, 9, 11 In this prayer, Prahlad Maharaj describes Lord Nishinga as the personal master, Prabhu, of the living entities and as Prahlad's own life and soul, Atmana Prabhur Ayam. Everything the jivas possess actually belongs to the Supreme Lord. Nonetheless, the Lord, as merciful as He is, rejects the respect and offerings of jivas who are materialistic fools, janad, abhidusha. The symptoms of, of their foolishness are described here in Brihad Bhagavatamrita. Such conditioned souls consider the Supreme Lord's deity a material statue, and his worship an empty ritual, and they disrespect the Lord's devotees and the living, the living beings in general. Therefore, the Lord is not interested in their op offerings. Sri Narda likewise states in Srimad Bhagavatam 4.31.21, the Supreme Personality of Godhead becomes very dear to those devotees who have no material possessions but are fully happy in possessing the devotional service of the Lord. Indeed, 
The Lord relishes the devotional activities of such devotees. <clears throat> but persons who are puffed up with their material education, wealth, aristocracy, and fruitive activity are very proud of possessing material things, and they often deride the devotees. Even if such people offer the Lord worship, the Lord never accepts them. There are several different ways to understand the prayer by Prahlad Maharaj cited above. That the Supreme Lord is fully satisfied with his own assets means that he is content with his own feelings of intense bliss. Nonetheless, he accepts the offerings of intelligent devotees. And because he is very compassionate to his devotees, for their benefit, he acts out of character, gratefully accepting offerings even though he is not in need. Or from another point of view, the words nija laba purna indicate that the Lord becomes fully satisfied purna by prema, the labha attainment achieved by his intimate devotees, nija. Or he is satisfied by the worship they perform, the lava that he receives from them. Because he obtains the ful fulfillment of his desires from his pure devotees, he is not attracted by the offerings of others. One should not think, however, that imperfect worshippers simply waste the wealth and other resources they expend for the Lord. When one worships the Supreme Person in any fashion, the result is always for one's benefit, Atmane. <clears throat> the example given by Prahlad Maharaj is that a person's beautiful features, including the auspicious tilak on the forehead, naturally appear together with his image reflected in a mirror. The beauty of the reflection, however, is only a mere resemblance <clears throat> of the person's original beauty. In the same way, ritual worship is but a semblance of pure devotion. Materialistic worshippers, therefore, do not achieve the primary goal of devotional service, pure love, because the Lord is not actually pleased by their offerings, they achieve only material benefits. Another way of looking at Prahlad's prayer is that although the Lord is very merciful, He does not accept the worship of the unintelligent who lack spiritual wisdom and who thereby, therefore worship for their own selfish purposes, atmane, not for the Lord's pleasure. But why do such people worship the Lord to accomplish their selfish ends? Because without making an offering to Him, they cannot achieve their own purposes. Just as a mirror cannot reflect beautiful decorations of the face that has not been decorated. From another point of view, out of compassion, the Supreme Lord accepts whatever an intelligent devotee offers Him. But if a devotee worships the Lord for selfish purposes, the result is only a semblance of what it could have been, like a person's beauty reflected in a mirror. The immature devotee receives some unimportant reward instead of the real success of pure devotion. Therefore, only worship offered with the unalloyed motive of pleasing the supreme the personality of Godhead leads to the treasure of Prema Bhakti, in which the devotee attains Sri Vaikuntha or some other abode of the Lord and is able to see him in person and associate with him. Still another understanding is that because the all powerful Supreme Person is already fully satisfied with his own achievements. He is not really interested in the offerings of the materialistic jiva souls. 
But even if the Lord has no reason to accept such worship for his own benefit, why doesn't he accept it for the benefit of his worshippers? The answer is that when the Lord refuses the offerings of persons too foolish to know what is good for them and what is not, he is actually bestowing his mercy. Seeing the frustration and anxiety of someone who has spent wealth and effort for ritualistic worship without devotion, the Lord mercifully ignores their worship, the worship to induce the materialistic person to stop his useless endeavor. Then again, a person trying to worship the Lord may be unintelligent, abhidusha, in the sense of not knowing the proper way to worship. In the course of performing sacrifices, he might, for example, commit violence against innocent animals. Still, shouldn't the chief of all worshipable lords reward even such a worshiper? The answer again is that the Supreme Person is all-merciful. If he were to en encourage such an offering by awarding benefits, he would be harming the sacrificial victims. Or, being satisfied with his own assets, the Lord neither accepts the offerings for his own sake nor accepts them for the sake of his worshippers. This is because the materialistic worshippers are less intelligent and the Lord is very kind. In general, a person cannot be certain whether the homage he offers to the Supreme Lord will result in his own benefit. He simply continues his labor in ignorance, taking trouble to collect the items required for worship. Meanwhile, the Lord, who cannot tolerate seeing the worshippers suffer such inconvenience, refuses to accept the worship, thus showing his supreme compassion. Of what use, then, is the attempt of an ordinary person to worship the Lord? The attempt is useful because it can eventually lead to one's complete fulfillment, atmane, whereas no other effort will. The beauty of one's reflected face in a mirror is one's own beauty only, no, and no one else's. Without the original beauty, no beauty will appear in the reflection. In other words, a candidate for devotional service must make an attempt, even if imperfect, to satisfy the Supreme Lord. There is no other way to achieve the perfection of life. And yet another way to understand Prahlad's prayer is this. The Supreme Lord, being the personal friend and master, Prabhu, of all living beings, Atmana, is satisfied, Purna, when his devotees succeed, Nijalaba, and when he can thus have their loving association. Or even though the Lord is already fully satisfied, his desires being all fulfilled by his pure devotees, doesn't he also accept the offerings, even of less intelligent persons? Of course he does, and he goes out of his way to accept their worship. But why? Because he is all kind. If he did not accept the offerings of those who worship him, those worshippers would never be able to achieve their desired success. Unless the jivas, unless the jivas offer whatever they can to the Personality of Godhead, they cannot gain any real benefit, even impure worship, in the short term, only marginally fruitful, will, will gradually lead to complete perfection if the Supreme Lord kindly accepts the worship. Hare Krishna. That is the most complete analysis of deity worship that is available, that I've ever seen. So I highly recommend that the devotees, hopefully you'll have the book, or you have the Veda base, and the book is in the Veda base, study those, these verses 
that we read tonight very carefully. Because Sanatana Goswami's expertise is his way of giving alternative views of the same verse. So you can go deep into devotional service by hearing these uh, purports by Sanatana Goswami. I highly recommend to do this. And this is why Srila Prabhupada, in his own words, said that you must read this book if you want to understand devotees, devotional service, Okay, it's 8.06. We made up our time that we lost in the beginning. So, if there are any reflections or questions or discussions about these very heady uh, purports we just read about deity worship, please let us know. This is from Vraj Varaba. Mm. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept Hare Bol, my humble obeisances or glories to Srila Prabhupada. What, what is a concocted deity form of the Lord? Also, what does it mean he can achieve perfection by once uttering the name of the Lord? How does this interplay with offenses to chanting? Well, by a concocted form, it means that the devotee makes it up on his own. He makes up a form. Uh, if, 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 the, if the person is concocting his own form and it's not the Lord's form, then it's idol worship. And the Lord doesn't accept that worship because he's not actually worshiping him. Why should he? And about the chanting of the holy name, it means offenseless. One name chanted offenselessly gives the perfection. Now, one may think, well, that's not fair because here's a devotee who's been chanting for 50 years and he's not, you know, getting pre Krishna Prema and this devotee, per another person chants one once and he gets everything. How is that fair? Well, it's fair because the devotee is not offensive. If, if the person who chants ignorantly the name, because the name is all-powerful, and, and the name manifests itself to you to the degree that you are without offense. So a devotee has been worshipping or chanting the name a long time, but is falling into the trap of making offenses to, to Vaishnavas especially, or to the deities for that matter, then, as it says in these verses, the Lord mercifully doesn't give him that result so that he will be inspired or reminded that he has to worship properly. That is the nature of the Lord. It's not an offense. It's not a, a, a fault on the Lord's part. It's his nature. If you approach him with, with, with love and faith and devotion, then he'll give everything, he'll give himself. But if a person is innocent and chants his name, the, 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 names, the, the Lord's name is very powerful, all-powerful, and gives mercy because the Lord is actually merciful, all-merciful. But when a person makes offense, he's also being all-merciful because he corrects the devotee. So one way or another, the devotee has to come to the point of chanting without offense. Hare Krishna. As Tuan is cooking for the deity in the temple, consider deity worship. Of course, if the devotee is cooking with love for the devotee, for the, for the deity, it's not, devotional service is not a mechanistic uh, activity that you do this ritual and you're in the temple or in the kitchen and it's offered to the Lord the Lord doesn't have to, uh, to, to accept it if it's not done with love he says that's twice 
in the same verse he mentions the word bhakti. If you actually trying, just like we have this little altar, you know, and devotees have commented this. All the devotees who have seen this altar, they comment how effulgent it is. Even though it's just photos and, you know, some small arrangements. Not like the major, uh, you know, temples, and uh, altars and temples with so much paraphernalia and so much, you know. But it's effulgent because there's some devotion being given to this altar. And, you know, this is our only deity that we have. <laughs> you know, so we, we're pouring out our, our, especially during our little morning program, we, we were pouring out our love and affection to the deities because the form of the Lord is not different from the Lord. That's the point. Hare Krishna. So whether you have a lot of paraphernalia or not, just like Sanatana Goswami, you know, he was hanging his deity in a tree and the only thing he would offer was some chapati without even salt. And one day the, the devotee said to him, can't you just give me a little salt? And he says, what can I do? I'm poor, I don't have anything. I just have to accept what I got. And he says, all right. And he took it. Because he had so much love. Pure love. More than pure love, he had the full mercy of Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> Hare Krishna. That's from Stella Erzik. Oh, Hare Krishna, Shiranjali, Hare Baal. Happy Easter, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances, Hare Krishna. Well, thank you. Same to you, Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all the devotees of the Lord. Jai, how all glories to the devotees of the Lord, Hare Baal. Thank you for tuning in. All right, thank you very much. This is really deep stuff, but the reason it's deep is it's because it's taking us to Goloka Vrindavan, the ultimate goal, the highest goal. Sri Brihad Bhagavatamurti Ki Jai, Samabeda Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai, Gaur Prem Anandi Hari Hari Bo. See you tomorrow night, same time, same place. Same topic, the creme de la creme de la creme. Bhagavatam is the creme, the cream of the Vedas, and Briya Bhagavatam is the cream of the Bhagavatam, the creme de la creme. Hare Krishna. See you tomorrow.